World Embraces AI Africa, including Botswana, is steadily covering its niche by leveraging indigenous knowledge, culture and languages to create solutions that resonate with local communities. A young Botswana, Mr. Gizo Matlabane, has developed the country's very first Botswana speaking AI model. This revolutionary uh, innovation not only preserves Botswana's rich linguistic and cultural heritage, but also positions Botswana as a vital part of Africa's digital transformation. In studio, I'm joined by the one and only Mr. Gizo Matlabane to examine how this cutting edge development opens doors for cross-continental collaboration and contributes to bridging the digital divide across Africa. A very good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us, Gizo. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. Right. Quite, quite interesting and quite exciting uh, to see such a model, such an AI model uh, being present, an AI that speaks Sotswana. How, how, tell, tell us about your journey in uh, you know, creating this model. Yeah, um, well, we started by creating or curating a tech community. And within this tech community, we realized the gap between, you know, there's been a development of AI models, generative AI models like ChatGPT and other models. So we realized that there's a shortage of data. There's a shortage of data, especially in our native language, Setswana. And if you try and uh, query something on ChatGPT, especially about Setswana, something that um, is in Setswana, mm. it will probably give you Sepedi or, or, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that was the gap that you had uh, initially noticed and decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's create this AI model that speaks Setswana, which is very interesting because uh, when you say that there also has been quite, uh, you know, what can I say, a, a gap uh, that does exist in terms of, uh, you know, Setswana language or some African, uh, you know, languages, uh, the, the absence of them uh, within Google Translate as well, which has been a gap that has been noticed. Are you looking into, uh, you know, going into that direction as well? Yes. Uh, the, whole, the whole idea is to improve the natural language processing. Um, the broader context of the natural language processing in terms of the co whole continent. Um, there are languages that are underrepresented within mm -hmm. AI research in Africa. Right. So we are looking into creating data sets that can provide that kind of research. Mm -hmm. Especially now, we, you know, there's a saying that Charity begins at home. Right. So there's no better place to start than with Setswana. Than with Setswana. Yes. Right. I, I'm really interested in, uh, you know, knowing, maybe if you could just run us through how exactly it is that, uh, you know, this AI model will operate. Is it a model that can be infused in, you know, different sectors? Uh, one notable one might be, uh, you know, the medical fraternity, where we find that in our clinics, in our hospitals, we find uh, non Sotswana speaking doctors and sometimes that can be like a barrier between the patient and the doctor in relaying uh, you know a clear message of what exactly it is that the patient needs can this uh, AI model be infused in uh, within such uh, you know a fraternity for ease of communication yes definitely uh, this model is made for any other platform within different sectors. Mm. It can be used in the medical field, like you gave an example, where people don't actually know how to, you know, to interact with technology mm. via English. Right. And they might need help. And, uh, yeah, this is where it comes in. And also, um, in other sectors, it's also applicable in, in a case where we can um, increase, um, we can increase, uh, we can broaden the scope. Mm. We can broaden the scope, um, looking at the fact that, you know, a lot of people want to know things in Setswana. Mm. And a lot of people interact with technology in English. Right. In every other field, people interact, and we are a clicking generation, as mm. you know. And everyone has a smartphone. Everyone is downloading these generative AI models. 
like ChatGPT, mm. and uh, an ordinary Motswana in, 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 in the village who just got into AI is wondering how am I going to educate myself or get information mm. through AI. Mm. Now this is where we come in by in incorporating new data sets mm -hmm. or data sets that has a wide range of Setswana content. Mm. Like like I had already mentioned that uh, the the AI that's present, the models that are present, they are not accommodative mm. of Setswana. Mm. So in other languages within the continent. Right, right. You did mention back there that uh, charity begins at home. Yes. And that it is best to start uh, within your community and take it to the world, uh, which is uh, something that is quite commendable. I would like to commend you uh, on that. What are, you, you did mention that the, at the beginning of our conversation, you did mention that uh, there is a community that you did build. Uh, you came together and you know worked together to build this model. What are some, who, who came on board? What are some of, who are some of your partners uh, you know, who helped you realize this uh, you know, vision and mission of including as it's on, or creating rather uh, an AI model that speaks to Tswana. Yes, um, there's a young man called Len Mokoka. You know, I'm talking about young men of the ages of 20, between 20 and 25. Mm. You know, they are interested in developing something in AI. And uh, we sat down and we said, what if now we started feeding data? What if we started creating data sets, mm. developing these data sets and, you know, broadening this now and taking it to the continental level? Right. So we decided, let us sit down and we developed, um, we developed two models, actually. Mm. We started with a model called Pato and then there's another one that we developed called uh, Nguana. Mm -hmm. So Pato, when it started, it it didn't know a lot of things. It was based on Google Gemini. Mm. So there's an AI that's called Google Gemini, mm -hmm. the one that is, is, is for Google users. Right. And then we based this AI, Pato, on Google Gemini. The files that are in Google Gemini was our foundation. Mm. So it spoke in CPD and other languages, so we had to feed data into it right. and teach it Setswana. We had to teach it that the president of Botswana is President Dumagido on Boko. Mm -hmm. We had to teach it, you know, a lot of things that Google Gemini doesn't know. Right. Yes. For a layman like myself, when it comes to, you know, tech and the likes, what do you mean by you had to teach it? How exactly did you teach it? We create data sets. Mm. We create data sets, we fit it with information, we give it ideas. Right. Yes, we come up, you know, there are names for certain, that's different names for certain things. Mm. So like I had said, um, the information that is already there is in CPD and you know, in, on the internet. As you know, AI is dependent on the information that it's already there. It learns from there. Right, yes. right. Is this a model that is actively uh, active at this moment? Yes, it's something that's active. Mm -hmm. And we haven't yet taken it to the world, but I mean to the whole country. Yeah. But it's there. It's something that we are we are we, are, we have made available, and we are talking to different companies about mm -hmm. incorporating it into their apps. To say, if you are running a business, like maybe you are you are running a, a tire shop, you can have this AI in your app where you interact with your, or even in your website. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we have a lot of companies, especially small companies, that have websites. Mm -hmm. Landing pages, you know. Imagine when you have a landing page, and how do you accommodate people who do not understand English? Mm. And yeah, right, right. That is quite, quite interesting. Uh, are there any challenges that you did encounter? Maybe if you could share with us uh, that part of the journey of creating this AI, and perhaps how you were able to overcome them. Yes, the challenges is like I said, we are building a tech community. Mm. The funding, we don't have, we are self-funding. I mean, right. if I have a hundred pula, I'll use that hundred pula to create a meeting with my brothers mm. and sit down and do a bit of more <laughs> development. Yeah. Yes, so we, we had a challenge of funding in terms of, you know, creating uh, a setup where we can constantly meet mm. and do something. 
Yes, and another challenge was uh, Setswana. Mm. It's not easy to work with different people because if you work with different, many other different people, if you involve a lot of people in something, they end up wanting to run a, run with it alone, right. or you know, trying to yeah. Mm. So, so that collaboration, though, there was challenges more intimate. with right. So we were trying to promote a more intimate environment so the challenge came where we did not understand certain Setswana mm. <laughs> terms right yes. right and who did you work with or partner with uh, in terms of you know getting uh, the correct words the correct translations of certain Setswana words like you're saying that uh, there are some Setswana Setswana can be <laughs> Setata <laughs> yes um, what we've been focused on is feeding it with information that's common right common information like mm -hmm. giving it data that's common like um, what what people query every day on the internet when mm. you are sitting there and trying what what are you googling mm. we so we re did research on what people are searching on the internet especially in Botswana mm. through Google Trends mm. so we got to understand that data and we use that sort of data to to teach this model right right language is a part of our culture you know and we pride ourselves in our Setswana even though it's very difficult but yeah. we pride ourselves in this uh, beautiful beautiful language and I believe that this AI model is a way to preserve uh, you know a part a very uh, you know vital part of our culture being our language I want you in this moment to give us, uh, you know, long term, long run goal uh, with this AI model that you have created. Yes. Um, you know, the United States has just announced large funding mm. for AI projects. So there's little research on AI in Africa, in the continent. So what we are thinking is in the long term, we are going to develop more models and feed them with our own local languages. Mm. That when I say our own local languages, I'm not just talking about Botswana, Skalaka, this. Yeah. I'm talking about Swahili, I'm talking about mm. different languages. Since essay, we have more than 10 languages. Mm. So we are going to create more models that respond in, when you query something or you, when you want to know something in English, it can be equated to when you are trying to learn it in Zulu mm. or you are trying to learn it in Swahili. Right. So that is where we are going. And in, in a year's time, we should be able to have all the languages in the Southern African continent. Mm. Mm. You did mention back there, um, Gizo, that you are still in talks with uh, different companies for them to be able to infuse uh, this AI model into the systems uh, that exist at the moment. When it comes to you know government uh, institutions as well or departments, have you as well uh, you know spoken to them in order to infuse this? Uh, because it, it, it's quite it's something that has been encouraged in previous years to preserve our culture has become something that we are very much intentional about as a nation. Uh, you know, which I believe that our government uh, you know is quite intentional in you know resourcing such initiatives initiatives and programs such as this one yes tell us more about uh, you know that yeah it would be beautiful of course to see this model being used in schools mm. especially because in every school in Botswana like in primary schools the government gave the schools about 40 tablets in the past years and uh, I seen recently the senior schools they were given good laptops mm. so you know we have access to the technology we just don't have you know what what do we do with that technology right yes so we are looking we are still in talks with the ministry of basic education uh, with the principal education officers to look into getting this into implemented in these gadgets mm. that the government has purchased. Right. As you know, because of uh, some certain level of bureaucracy, things take time. So I believe we will reach there. As we, we've come here, we are, we are pushing. We are pushing mm. daily uh, for our tech community. We have amazing things that I'm not even mentioning here today. Mm. And uh, I believe we will have time to talk about them some other time. Right. And yeah.
All right. Yeah, you did mention that some of the, you know, one key component that is needed, that you need in order to thrive, is financing. Apart from financing and perhaps, uh, you know, all the entities that you have spoken to uh, being able to infuse this AI model into the systems, what else uh, you know, do you need? What kind of support do you need in order uh, you know, to thrive? Yes, um, research, this is, this is mostly, this work that we are doing is mostly research based. Right. So we need, um, other than the resources in terms of the financing and that, we need guidance mm. we need guidance we can't know it all of mm. course we are trying we are learning we are trying to and there are experts there are already expert ai experts in botswana mm. so we need guidance we need to be linked with with the right people who can sit down with us and guide us in terms of i know Ghana nowadays when you come up with something and you say can you guide me can you teach me we are afraid that somebody will say no this this is my idea mm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah so it's not you know ai is not cannot be owned by an individual all right. because this all th it all started with open ai remember when open ai started mm. everyone can create their own model mm. so we we just came in and say let us do language models and do it in Setswana. Mm. So we need the support to say, okay, this is how you can fast track this. How can we bring it now to competitive levels, right. global levels, mm. and how can we do it quickly? This is the new sport. Mm. I mean, hello, raro kone ko football on. This is the new sport. Yeah, things. V very true. Very true. Actually, it it it. it it is. It, it really is. It's the new thing on the block, and it's here to stay. Yeah, it's here to stay. It is here to stay. Uh, that is all the time that we did have. Thank you so much, Kizo. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so that was uh, Kizo Mutlabane, a young uh, Mutswana who has just shared with us a beautiful and much-needed AI model uh, that speaks Sotswana that they have created uh, in order, you know, to uh, be part of the community and bring a change in terms of preserving our culture, uh, you know, that part of our culture being language. This is something that it is, is quite vital. And as he has said it, they are working on taking it to the world and not just here. But as he said it, charity begins at home. So they have started in their community and looking forward to taking it to the world. Stay tuned for the news at the top of the hour. A gona komponi kana le hatse lepe le le ka yang go pe ga e se mapata mapata institutions za le hatse leo kana komponi yeo a bereka ha mapata a sa bereke ha di patela di sa khone go gorosa melemo Go ba lwezi. Ha matichara asakoni kukoro.